So I'm Jomo Phillips. I'm a couple and family therapist, and I lead the Relational Practices, which is an online group practice here in Barbados. And one of the services that we provide is that we provide services to people who are experiencing breast cancer and other forms of cancer, and also ways to, to sort of support them and their families. I think one of the challenges very often is that receiving a breast cancer diagnosis can put people sort of off their, off their kilter. They can go into sort of shock, they can go into sort of disequilibrium. I think one of the things is normalizing that particular experience. It makes sense for me to be all over the place because I am receiving something that I may not be sure of in terms of maybe prognosis. And I'm also may not be sure of in terms of just sort of what it might mean for things like my body and for my life as well too. I think people sort of oscillate. So we're moving between two different places. So one place that we're moving to is how do I sort of understand this diagnosis and live with it? And we also oscillate in terms of everyday life. I think particularly when the diagnosis is new, that oscillation may actually be overwhelming. Yes, I think part of it is just sort of giving yourself time and recognizing that you are going to have to attend to looking after yourself in terms of health, with your appointments, with treatment. But over time, as well as we better manage that, then we can also pay attention to all the other things in terms of our lives as well, including family, children, and all the various responsibilities that we have. I guess as a couple of family therapists, I'm biased. So I, I always think one of the things, support is vital. Very often when we have something that's new and we're doing it all on our own, it's too much in terms of burden. So it's really helpful to be able to share and gain support from other people. I think one of the things is also just sort of accounting for your own experience, that's vital as well too. And people may um, manage those responses in different types of ways. Just sort of thinking about just sort of working with couples where a female has been diagnosed with breast cancer, men very often may sort of hide their feelings or pull away. I think part of it is being able to acknowledge your experience and being able to turn to each other. Yeah, you know, as we turn to each other, and that's vital in terms of providing support. So a variety of different things. I think a lot of strategies really are about being very practical. So I mean, one of the things is that person is probably going to have a range of different appointments, for example, offering the opportunity to be able to give rides, thinking about all the other responsibilities that other person may have as well to making it a little, little less burdensome. So being able to pick up children, for example, if they have children, being able to offer a meal, and being able to provide a variety of different types of physical support. I think one of the things is we can sort of, sort of uh, pour from an empty cup. So it's really important that we look after ourselves. And, that, and that's hard sometimes when it involves somebody that we care and love, right? But there are a variety of different ways that we can sort of look after ourselves. And basic stuff, right? Just being able to eat, for example, making sure that we get adequate rest, being able to sort of do things that give us pleasure as well too. Because otherwise, we're not going to be the best support for the people that we love. I think one normalizing that is going to be ups and downs in terms of experience. So we're going to oscillate. And there are a variety of feelings that we're going to experience. Grief and sadness and anger. So to normalize those feelings. I think the other thing as well too is also finding outlets, right? Finding outlets that are physical. Finding outlets that are emotional as well too. So it's really vital that we look after ourselves if we want to be resilient.